Hey, this is Carola with Metal Life Magazine. I am here with a pretty sore voice after an awesome uh, tour stop in Santa Ana. I'm here with Ben from Goat Or. How are you doing, Ben? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. You've had a busy first couple of days uh, during Summer Slaughter and even beforehand. How are you feeling so far? Just a couple of days in. Oh, pretty good, pretty good. I'm just getting used to the earlier schedule, you know, with Summer Slaughter. We have to be here at uh, like 10.30 in the morning, somewhere up in there. And then, you know, it's it's a pretty long day after that. We play around 6.30, 6.45 so mm -hmm. far the last two nights. And, you know, it's just different from other tours. Like, usually other tours, you're you're on, like, doors are at, like, 6 o'clock. Right. You don't have to be there until, like, 3 or so. So just getting adjusted to that kind of schedule right now, which mm. eh, after a few days won't be anything. It'll be cool. Yeah, this tour seems really, really, like, efficient with their time. Like, it's half hour and we're done, and we move on, we move on. But everything's well, really running clean. You kind of have to with that you. many bands, you know? You, yeah. don't want, you don't want anything to get off because then all, everything's going to start conflicting and bands are going to lose times with their sets and I mean bands already have short amount of times anyway so right it, it works really well right also another thing I really like that's that's particular to this venue actually is is that they they split so there are a lot of bands there are a lot of local bands down in the first venue the constellation room and there was you guys up there did you get a chance to check out any of the local bands down there and uh, what's your kind of reaction right, to I, I caught a, a few of them man and they, they got some good ones out there you know and it's it's impressive nowadays that they you know from city to city that you go to there's some really good bands I mean well, if you really think about it, we were all local bands at one point right. from where we were from. So, hence, there would definitely be bands that were good when you play, you know, other people's towns, and they're quote unquote the local bands as well. Right. So, and it's all the process. You see the process of, you know, like basically when we were first starting, and we did that same kind of thing, and you right. know, and bands are doing that, and that's how the cycle unfolds and keeps going, and then the band gets more popular and more noticed mm -hmm. between what they do and then they get bigger you know but definitely I, I think the improvement of local bands has kind of raised up too like people right. are really more inclined and interested in what they're doing as a band and they're really pushing the effort and plus you know they're going up against all these you know national acts touring and everything so they really have to put their A game on to play these shows yeah it is absolutely tell me about a time that you remember because you said it perfectly like we're all local bands at one point what's one thing that you really remember something about when when you were in a local when when you when goat whore was local what what sort of memory do you remember from from being local that you don't really have as you get bigger and bigger um it's it's all kind of the same i think what what you what the thing is that with local is like when you play, you play and you, you build your audience, but it's your local town, you know? It kind of starts with your friends, mm. and then your friends' friends, and then it kind of, like, grows a little bit more, grows a little bit more. And then when you, you finally realize, like, you you got this feeling of, like, that you are doing really well and things are maybe getting bigger until you go out and you play somewhere else. And it's almost like mm. you start over again because oh. what you have to do is you have to do that same cycle for every town you go to, basically, right. you have to build your status. You have to go there and play, present yourself in front of people. You know, I mean, a give or take. You know, nowadays from back when we first started, the internet plays a bigger role, and right. so people can hear your band a little more. So when you go to a town, they're kind of they have an idea of it because you you know between Facebook and you know Spotify thing, people posting their music online, so it's a little bit more accessible, but. You know, it's that same thing. You still have to go there to build your audience. And so basically, you're you're the local band that's coming out of your town, and you're going to these areas, and you're building the audience a little bit more. So right. Do you think it could have helped you? Like, when 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 you were a local band, what was one of the most frustrating things that that you think like this, maybe this generation of local bands has it a little bit easier than than you did? But what's one thing that was well, I mean, when, I was, when I was when we first started, you know, I mean, we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have GPSs. You know, we used a map, and we pulled off. Like if we did shows out of town, we pulled off at pay phones and called the promoters, you know, to get oh. directions because we didn't have MapQuest and you know Google Maps and things like that. So right. It's making me sound really old. But, Kids uh, today, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know what's funny is it's like okay, younger bands, you know, they'll never really deal with that. But I think it's unique to like have dealt with that and now being at the point where things are way more accessible like having a GPS and all that kind of stuff and a cell phone and it's like wow it's so much 
it's so much easier. You know, okay. it's like when I look back and I'm like, holy shit, how did we do that? And then, but you know, we did it. You, it's your, it's a means. You you sort it out and you figure it out and you just work it to the best you can. And so at this point now, it's just like, wow, everything's there. It's right there in your hands. You can do whatever you can find, whatever you need. You get to a venue, you want to go get something to eat, you just pull out a little gadget, look, and you can find it like right down the street there. or something. So. Yeah, it's a big convenience. Now, one thing I've always been fascinated with as far as, um, as, far as Gohor goes, I have a couple of friends who live in the NOLA area, and they always talk about what a tight-knit community you guys are. And I hear about like shows being spontaneous at the last minute, like you all are just so close in that area. Can you tell me a little bit about the, the tight-knit heavy metal community in your hometown? Yeah, I mean, it is it is really close-knit. You know, a lot of people do think, because, you know, they look at bands like Down and, uh, you know, like Philip being from Pantera and stuff like that, and they think the New Orleans scene is huge. You know, I mean, New Orleans right. itself isn't really that huge of a city compared to, like, Los Angeles, New York City, Chicago, Chicago things like that. It's really kind of small. And even when I was growing up, there was a lot of tours that didn't come through New Orleans. I would drive to Texas yeah. to go see shows. You know, I would go to Houston to go see a lot of tours because it's just, we were always like a small market. We still are a small yeah. market. And it is a, a smaller, more compact, condensed scene. And things just work like that. It's more, it seems like it's more family function, function. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody's closer knit like that. And a lot of people are intertwined in other bands, you know, like. Like I Hate God and Crowbar. Jimmy Bauer used to play drums with Crowbar, and he plays with I Hate God, you know, but he also plays drums and down. So he was intertwined in a whole bunch of bands. And his, I mean, his history goes back even further than that. You know, I mean, I remember when I was a kid and Jimmy was jamming in, in little bands, and I was just a kid going to shows and stuff like that. That's so awesome. it's like everybody within that scene is involved in some sort of way in the development and the evolution of that scene. Even Mike right. Williams that sings for I Hate God, you know, yeah. even Philip who left there and he, you know, got involved with Pantera, but then he's come back, and you know, he does the thing with Down, where, you know, that originated as a band with guys that grew up together playing music in different bands. You know, like Pepper used to play in Graveyard Rodeo, and then he moved and played with Coc, and you know, and so they have all these different aspects of different people that have played together throughout time and throughout the evolution of the scene and it's, it's it is it's close knit but at the same time it's 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 kind of small you know right it's small but it definitely has expanded and it also like i don't well to a certain extent do you think the scene has a certain sound a certain exclusive sound that you would say yeah that's the new orleans sound or do you think much like the bands they're, they're starting to expand their musical horizons no i definitely think new orleans does have its own kind of element for sure you know i mean look at you know look what crowbar does look what i hate god mm -hmm. does you know look what acid bath did look what you know down does i mean even look at goat i mean we're all we're all really separate entities though as well you know yeah, i think definitely. Uh, uh, but we all do share kind of things i think just naturally being from there you're already you know you you already have they got some tons of fucking bugs on here. <laughs> do you feel like you're back in the sauce now? <laughs> no, not that way. It's, it's a different kind of bug. Yeah. Um, but no, it's definitely it's something that's in an influence. It's like a natural influence. It's like you grew up there and it's like a natural thing that goes right. on with, with people in bands there. So I think there's like a more of a subconscious based thing that just from being there and growing up in that scene, the influence is just kind of instilled and it falls into place with all these bands. And that's that maybe be a similar quality, but each band itself is so different in its own aspect. You know, Crowbar doesn't sound like I God. I God doesn't sound like right. Acid Bad. Acid Bad doesn't sound like down, but they do have little elements that kind of are rooted in that, you know, in right. the, the, like the Louisiana scene. But they don't sound like copy. No, no, no. You know, like yeah, in some areas definitely. you get, you get uh, bands, you know, and then they start becoming like cookie cutter bands, you know, like okay, this band's big from there, and now has all these little duplicates. It's like even though there's a band like Crowbar and they do really well, there's really no Crowbar copycats. Right. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. There's no, and there's no like I God copycats. They might be bands like that outside of our scene, outside of Louisiana, but I can't it's even not really, think of any yeah. though. But I can't kid I can't. But it is. It's really. I think it's really unique because it is so varied like that. And it, what's unique too is, like I said, like a member playing in three of the bands, but yet it's still having a lot of different elements too. 
But I feel like it really yeah. reflects the culture in New Orleans too, how you guys are, you're obviously historically, it's such a diverse community, but it's still very, very tight-knit in its own in its own culture. It's exclusive, but it's diverse at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, a little something I've, I've always actually wanted to ask you is those gauntlets of yours, uh-huh. are they homemade or did you purchase them or do you have... I have a friend in Florida who makes them. He does a lot of shows. He works at, uh, he does a lot of leather work and he usually works at like renaissance festivals and stuff and he, do, he makes some stuff for people that do like the cosplay shit, you know. Yeah. Like that, so. Have you, have, have but, you always accessorized? Like have you always had those big accessories or was there a time where you just said like, no? With Godor, yeah, like, has bam-o. always had, like I originally started off with ones with like spikes that were probably like, uh, maybe like a, an inch or so or maybe an inch and a half. And then, you know, I kind of evolved them and took ideas from things, influences of bands that I listened to when I was younger. Oh, you know, and cool. now, and, and so, and, I, and the thing was, was I gave him, his name's Gravedigger, and uh, I've given him ideas, you know. I was like, hey, man, you know, I have this idea, you can do that, you know. And also, I have, like, kind of longer, like, monkey arms. <laughs> my The area of my arm here, I have to make sure, too, it's bigger because my arm is being longer. Because, like, there's, like, a default size they make gauntlets, you know? Right, And so okay. I found that they were kind of shorter, and so I had him, you know, we measured my arm, and we made them larger and things like that. So just covered, like, three quarters of your arm, and you just, there's, like, a part of your elbow sticking yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, we did, we did that. And then I also, you know, basically, like, with the, the ones that I have now, I wanted to take kind of more of, like, a Judas Priest. <laughs> Rob Halford approach. Okay. And I did like the diamonds studs, you know, and but I wanted them black, you okay. know, something a little different than, you know, just kind of concepted off of the whole Judas Priest Rob Halford thing, but then okay. putting in my own element into it as well. Right. So no like aviator glasses and <laughs> no, 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 not all that. You know, <laughs> that's I'll leave that to them. They're, they're good at that, so I'll leave that in there. Uh, so another question I have for you is. I think your band is very unique because Goat Whore is really starting to to evolve into a new sound between the older generation of metal who says, yeah, you know, in the late 80s I used to go jam to Slayer and Suicidal Tendencies and then this newer generation. There were some really young kids in the audience tonight. And I just want to know what you think your reaction is leading like, do you, do you get different reactions from older to younger, or do you, do you agree that, that Goat Whore might, might be this bridge that can relate to older and younger metal generations? Well, I mean, I definitely feel we, we could be that bridge. It just depends on, you know, the generation and how they feel about what we're doing, you know? I can't, you can never control how things go with how people are going to accept your band or be into what you do, you know? You just kind of... I've learned to just do it and enjoy what I was doing, and then whatever unfolds, unfolds, you know? Right. But, I mean, yeah, there was. There's a lot of more younger audience here and everything, and it's... And we, we all... I mean, there's a couple of us in the band that are a little older, and, yeah, we have more of an, a traditional kind of influence to things that we do. And I, I think it would be great if kids are really into us and want to, you know, bridge that whole idea, and it would kind of assist, like, us discussing bands like Judas Priest and Motorhead and things like that that right. we're into, and kids going back and digging that up. I mean, there's so much stuff that comes out today. It's hard to keep up with things. So, But I always feel that, you know, you should have some, like, history there and know what's, what has evolved into what's going on today. You know, right. I mean, there's a lot of younger bands out there that are doing a great job, you know, keeping the, the faith alive within metal and everything like that. And, you know, at one point, you know, I'll... You know, I'll come a time when we're not doing it no more, or I'm not doing it no more, and I'm actually happy to see that there's a younger generation out there pushing it and digging into the past of metal and, you know, making it part of it. Because, you know, I think you have to go back to the past sometimes and, and, and listen to that stuff and kind of take it into consideration as how can we approach this like they did, but more in a modern fashion? You okay. know, how can we do something that's like it but a little bit different you know I mean it's hard to be original nowadays because there's so much stuff out there but there's a way you can take all of those styles and work them into your own way that's I guess beneficial as well right so you know if if it was to happen I think it would be great if kids use this as a tool of like bridging that that idea between old and modern kind of and you you've definitely said in a few interviews that that you believe that that you guys have been been doing that 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 you've taken steps little by little by little 
and evolved into into something greater where you really feel like you're starting to grasp that you have an original sound that go or is starting to have their own sound yeah i mean we we definitely you know i don't want to paint the band into any kind of corner like as far as uh you know, a genre or anything like right. that. I mean, to me, when somebody says, well, how would you explain go I'm just like, well, we're, we're pretty much like heavy metal, <laughs> you know? I mean, you can get, you know, everybody's going to put things into genres and subgenres, you know, and categories like that. Yes, we have death metal influences. We have black metal influences. We have thrash metal influences. We have, you know, more traditional metal influences like Judas Priest, right. Seb, Black Sabbath, you know, Motorhead. And... You know, so we blend a lot of those ideas. I don't, you know, want people to paint us into just like one kind of subgenre because sometimes that deters people as well. Right. Like, you know, I mean, when I mean, when I was growing up, there was times when I was into certain things, I was kind of blinded. You know, I was like, all right, I'm just, I'm into death metal right now, or I'm just yeah. into like thrash metal. And as I got older, I learned that I was like, well, I kind of like all of them. So I'm just, you know, is it a peer thing, peer pressure where I'm just with a group of friends and I want to just be in that style and or I want to evolve and, you know, like all these things because I like the elements. Of this. You know, I was listening to, I listened to punk when I was a kid, you know, and old cross punk type stuff. And that was like an influence as well. So, you know, but, you, you know, it'd be me. I'd be like a long haired kid and I'm hanging out with the punk kids, you know. So it's like it's, it's, it's a crossover concept, too. You know, back okay. when I was a kid, it was a huge thing. Like DRI did it and everything where they kind of cr- bridged and crossed over like punk with metal, punk, you know, with hardcore, you know, things like that. So. But do you, do you, do you think there's a difference between. Because go, you, you just said that you don't like the subgenre classification. Do you think there's a difference between Godor having a genre characterization and then Godor having a sound characterization? Like, yeah, this is really our Godor sound. Like, we we accomplished what, what you just said about making a mosaic of all these different genres and we made a sound. Do you think there's a difference between a genre classification and, and like, a, a sound I think classification? It's a, I think that's opinions, though, you know? Everybody's got different opinions about how they perceive each band. Like, like if... There was a band me and you heard. We would have different opinions on what we felt on how they, what their style was, or what kind of genre they they would fall under. Or we might have similar ones. You know, it's everybody's got their own opinion about. It. Some bands hear bands like, I've heard people say, oh well, Go Horrors a black death, black thrash band or whatever. Or someone said, oh they're kind of no, they're more like black and death metal. You know, so there's different opinions there, which is fine as well because we're not all going to perceive things as the same and there's so many variations out there as well right you know so i'm just saying i don't want to get painted into one corner right that makes people sense. because i think it's a little bit more open to that and i want to i want people to be able to be like oh well they have this element i might be interested in it and so let me try it out and it's so right. silly nowadays to even say that but it seems like people, even though the accessibility of the internet, to even to listen to bands, some people overlook that to just even try a band through that way. You know, it's just like, wow, you got it there. You can sample it. You know, you right. don't have to. And if you're going to sit here and read from somebody else and be like, yeah, this band's like this. And they're like, oh, I don't like this band. But they never listen to them. It's just like, man, the way things are now, just at least sit down, check it out, and see if it it falls into something that you're into, because you never know, just because someone else said, you know, whatever kind of genre they put you into. Yeah, the use of the internet is actually, that's really funny. I come to think that the use of the internet for listening to bands is really ironic, because before, when people were doing, like, tape trading or CDs and you didn't have internet, you know, bands would be like, well, how do we get our word out to people if we don't tour? There's always going to be people who don't know about us. But then you get the internet, and you think, oh... Yeah, we're totally going to have all this access to people, and then people don't check it out because they become too overwhelmed. So in a sense, like, the internet may not help because people will overlook exactly like you said. It just becomes too much. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, But there's, yeah, I mean, there's so many bands out there and everything, but the internet also supplies the fact that, like, when I was a kid, you know, I had to save up money and go buy records that I might be interested in. You know, but we didn't have the means to listen to them. So sometimes you were there in the record store, and you're like, "This cover looks cool. The song titles look mm-hmm. cool. The picture of them kind of looks cool. Let me try it." And you get home. It was kind of like gambling, you know. 
and you, you got home and maybe the record was really good or it wasn't so good. You know what I'm saying? Well, now, instead of doing that, instead of having to spend all the money and they got so much shit going on, you can go and listen to a few tracks and be like, yeah, I dig this band, so I can go right. buy it. You know, so there's that. But the, the thing about nowadays, though, too, is there's so many things out there, and kids only have so much money. You know, there's new releases every fucking Tuesday. Yeah. You know, tons of stuff that comes out in a month's time, much less a whole year. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's hard for people to keep up with that, especially when they don't have the money to kind of stabilize it. You know, so they right. gotta kind of be pick and choose and pick and choose. And but there's so much shit out there. Yeah. That's for sure. For you guys to see now, it's a big deal. Now, my last question for you is, you have obviously been very uh, avid about studying a lot of old school influences, except Judas Priest, things like that. Have you gotten any reactions that you know of from the bands themselves to your music or anything? Or have you, have you yet to get a reaction from those bands that you idolize? I would just be Wait, curious what? to see, like... So, would the bands accept Judas Priest, Motorhead, those bands that you say, have they, to your knowledge, seen your music and, and oh, I don't really know. I mean, listen to I it? I mean, we've toured in the past, you know, like Celtic Frost is a huge influence of ours. I mean, right. that's a band that pretty much spawned us from the beginning. But, uh, and we toured with them. And, you know, Tom G and all, they, they knew what we did and they were interested in the, the, the style of music we were doing and everything, which is really unique, you know. And we, we did some shows with Venom, that who's also an influence. And Kronos, you know, witnessed us and everything and, you know, things like that. So it's unique that somebody like that that you looked up to and built your career on, you know, took notice of what you were doing and, and you know... I don't know how much of maybe the comment was true or not, but you know they they went out of their way to say you know we watched you tonight you know and, 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 and things That's like that. That's awesome. So it, it's cool. It's cool. Definitely a band of bands that were definitely huge influences on the building block of what we are currently doing at this point. Right. That's awesome. I'm so glad you're on this tour and it'll be kick ass tomorrow. It's going to be a hell of a show. Yeah. Fucking right, man. Thank you, man, for joining no us today. Thank you.